Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial today, and this is going to be another Unity 5 tutorial, and it's going to focus on maybe setting up your lighting or your global illumination lighting within Unity 5 for the first time. I'm not an expert of running everything in Unity 5, I'm still learning myself, I haven't had an awful lot of time to focus on many things, because as I've said to a lot of people, I've still got projects going in Unity 4. So this is just going to be a basic sort of overview and quick look about setting up your environment lighting within Unity 5. So, when you start a new scene, file, new scene, you'll get a main camera and a directional light. Now your directional light will be directional, it'll be real time, it'll have more of a sort of warmish colour, the intensity will be 1 and the bounce intensity will also be 1, it'll have soft shadows enabled. Now that's all well and good, that's fine um, for this. What you might also want to do, well you will need to do, is you want this lighting tab. Now, what you want to do to get that is you go to Window and Lighting if you don't already have it, and I just drag it over to this right hand side so it makes it easier to see. Now, what I'll do is I'll start by creating um, some cubes. And I'll skip through this because all I'm going to do is just build a little scene so that you can see everything inside. And if you look back on this, you can see that if we rotate the directional light, we can obviously affect the shadows that we've got. I'm going to apply a quick texture to my models. So I will select all my models that I want to apply my texture to. And just drag it on. So we can zoom in and we get the texture that you may well have seen before. Now what I'll also, or what you might want to do is drag your first person controller prefab into the scene. So we'll just drop that in here. And then we can run around within our scene. Now, nothing really that exciting is actually going on at the moment within um, Unity. Now I'm going to hide the grid because it's a bit annoying when I don't really need it. Now. On the lighting tab, you'll notice that we've got the different things. So we're going to set a skybox. We're going to set the normal skybox. So we'll click on it and we'll search for the default skybox. And the default skybox will be added to our scene once we add it. Now we're going to add the directional light as our sun over here. We're going to have the ambient source as um, the skybox. I'm going to actually turn the ambient light down because in real life we don't actually have ambient light. Um, we'll have the real-time uh, global illumination on. Skybox is going to be our reflection source. For this, I'm just going to turn both reflection um, intensity and bounces down. I'm going to keep um, pre-computed global illumination. The real-time resolution, the higher you set that, was the old way of light mapping. So the more um, higher you put that amount, the more detail you're going to get in your light map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to untick baked global illumination because we don't want that yet. We'll keep the general GI to directional. The intensity and the bounce boost, I'll keep the intensity 1 and maybe up the bounce boost to 2. Now what I'd like to also do is continuous baking doesn't need to be on, but for real time, so it needs to be updated every time you change something yourself, we need to have that enabled. Now you can see that nothing really has actually done anything and it looks still the same. Now what you need to do for all your objects that are never going to move is that you need to select them. So all my cubes that I've got in my scene or all your objects you might have in your scene that are not going to be animated, we want to be able to make sure that we tick them as static. So in the box at the top corner is the box called static and you will then notice that the pre-computing global illumination starts running in the background so of course this will be more taxing on your computer if it's not you know up to spec or say but that's why there's still the baked global illumination that you can still achieve but this is using the real time now that'll just take as long as it needs to to compute its global illumination and then you will see it once it's um, completed one thing you might want to do in the meantime is get rid of your main camera so you only have a first person controller. What you can also do is if you set your directional light to static, so if that's not going to move either, we can set that. I'm not sure if that makes a difference entirely, but for lights that are not um, 
moving and not going to rotate we'll leave that by itself of course you can adjust all these settings like the intensity of the directional light itself the bounce intensity of it itself I just need to wait for the um, global illumination to finish calculating and we can um, turn the atlas size down to make this process a, a bit quicker and one thing I'll mention here is you can set the uh, CPU usage to calculate the global illumination so if you want it to render as fast as possible um, you can set that to high or unlimited so it'll just I've just got it on low in the background and you'll notice that it increased um, some settings so from the light map Terry to not we get um, the baked in global illumination so the shadows are more soft from where the sun hasn't hit over in one particular direction and we can obviously move particular values so we can move that and it will then um, recalculate the global illumination according to what we're setting the distance away of the directional light does not actually matter so we can change this and it'll um, bake once it's baked once um, it'll work far more efficiently and it won't take as long um, you can see that the bounce intensity if I turn that up it'll turn up the overall brightness of the scene that I've got so if I put it to about 2 you don't really want to take the intensity of your particular light beyond 1 because that's sort of real world setting so in the general GI you can up um, the indirect um, intensity so indirect light is something that say our sun's pointing this way and we don't actually have any light directly hitting this surface from the sunset or from a light source it will when light bounces around that's indirect light is light that's not directly facing a particular surface and while that was baking a couple of optimate um, a couple of optimization tips you can as I said increase your CPU usage up you can reduce the resolution of your light map so if you set it to one if you set it to less um, it'll be quicker the higher as I say more resolution it's gonna take longer to compute now this is just a literally a little scene inside a red floor gray sort of walls green roof now you can see with the global illumination baked out you can see that we get different um, shades of a particular object emitting onto other surfaces so say this red we can see that with the real-time global illumination we can see that the red hue has been added to the object along with the green from the roof has sort of faded into the grey areas of the walls now you don't get that unless you did um, some more advanced baking within Unity 4. Now you get this out of the box within Unity 5. This is just a really basic example. So some cubes with some literally some uh, materials which are just the albedo is set to a particular color strand and that's what you get. And if I give you an example and I move or delete one of these cubes we'll get more light bleeding in and then the global illumination again as long as continuous bacon is on it will pre-compute everything again and it will just run in real time always in the background of your games so anything you chop and change it will always re-bake the lighting obviously like I said you can still do the baked so it doesn't require the real time because real time probably wouldn't run on um, low end mobile devices I don't even know if they run on high end mobile devices I suppose it's more for Viz, but see more light came in and then we still got the green hues on the walls but we got a lot more light computed inside of the room just based on whatever we're going for so that's just the sort of really basic tips of setting up the initial part of your global illumination and there's far more advanced things that you can go on to and I'll cover in the future it will it be reflection bulbs all the different texture types that you can use and so on and so on but just remember you need to have a skybox a, a sun or a directional light or a light that um, has the real-time functionality you set the ambient source you can use ambient light if you want but as I said it's not required reflection 
um, bounces in intensity are not, are not really required because they um, affect other things. You can take the pre-computed real-time GI. You can affect the general settings now um, from your overall settings and then you can make the desired look of what you're after and that's pretty much the overall basis so thanks again for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers